You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to I Am Heart Radio. Host Sue McDaniel will open your heart and unlock the natural healing power that is deep within each and every one of us. So now please welcome the host of I Am Heart Radio, Sue McDaniel. This is the I Am Heart Show. I'm your host, Sue McDaniel, on Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and Tune In Radio. Welcome on this wonderful Tuesday afternoon. Hope you're doing well. I am heart. Shall we talk about their heart and the powerful energy that our heart carries, as well as the loving kindness and gentleness and nurturing that it has for us, no matter what we're feeling. No matter if we're feeling happy and, and wonderful, enthusiastic, or for we'll have a day which we just don't feel that way. When we're t- kind of down and we have things we're, we're pondering or thinking about or we're sad or we're depressed or we're, we feel, feel some really bummer kind of feeling, your heart is still there for you, carrying lots of love to you, lots of care for you, lots of saying, baby, you'll be all right. We're all in this together. We talked last week uh, about that, about connecting to our heart and I want to talk tonight about something a little different. I want to talk about heart, heart Math or the Heart Math Institute because it is an organization that has been in operation for, well, I don't know, 30, 40 years, since about 1991, I believe. And it has wonderful tools to help us both connect with our heart and to help us find that still spot, that still point, we can truly listen to our heart and let our heart help us because sometimes we get so wrapped up in our world in our anxiety or what's going on that we just really need to stop and listen. Uh, the, the world grabs us by the neck and drags us around. And so we need some time to stop and listen and be still and just collect our thoughts, collect our feelings, collect our mind, collect our quietness, uh, to do some problem solving or make a decision. And so I want to talk about the place where you can find lots of help. They have lots of, lots of opportunities to help people and they've helped, Oh, children and schools and communities and the whole world for years and years and years, uh, to come together and connect. And as Lee Harris said last week, you know, as we move through June and the new energies into the, into the rest of this year, it is a time to connect to come out of our houses and 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 talk to each other again and share again and, and connect with each other again and connect, connect with our own heart. I think we are truly ready for that. Everybody's ready for that. We've missed many things, many people things uh, that or we missed people. Uh, and so I think that's important for us to look at as we do this, you know, some feelings, some emotions, some thoughts, some, some, actually some fear may pop up because it's been a while since we've done that to a large extent. So I'm here to help you with that again and to share some resources uh, for you to have. Uh, hope they work for you. And if they don't, then uh, maybe one day they will. Maybe this is not quite the moment in time for you to use it, but later it will be. I want to talk about the Heart Math Institute. As I said, they've been around for a long, long time. Uh, they started as a non-for-profit, and their mission was to help people bring their physical, mental, and emotional systems into balance, into alignment, 
in their hearts in their in their heart and to connect with their heart and use the uh, intuitive guidance that the heart has there to give for us. In other words, uh, instead of just this living and listening to the chatter and the rattle of our mind, uh, which chatters all the time, listening to the power of our heart, because the heart is the most powerful energetic or organ in this energy system that we live in, in our body. And we haven't, no one told us how to connect to it or to how to use that energy. Or not in my world, they didn't. And so the heart math folks have been around for a long time, working with strategies and all kinds of help for people to connect with their heart and then connect in a different kind of energy and calm and peace and well, well-being that we might have from the fear of noise that we hear so much in our head. So they have all kinds of tools, and they're really, the really intent is that we connect with that loving energy of the heart, that we connect with it and use it and let it be there for us. So Doc Childer is, was one of the people who really founded it, probably the primary founder of, of heart math. And so he says what they're really after is the balance or alignment or cooperation between the heart and the mind and the emotions. Between the heart and the mind and the emotions. And the balance they call it coherence. They call it coherence. And what coherence does is it promotes more intuitive connection with our highest potential so we can reason and discern and consider our interactions with ourselves and others. In other words, it takes us out of that fear panic state that we have lived in for so long and have lived in in a short period of time last year and this year still. And it brings us back to a different place, a place where we connect with our, our mind, we connect with our heart, we connect our thoughts and feelings and the, it, let them all work together so that we don't just get a panic response, but we get a broader response to whatever situation we're dealing with or whatever world we're, situ- we're dealing with. And so he calls it coherence. That's, his, that's their definition. They have lots of things that are tied to the word coherence. He talks, it's a, it's a balance. Uh, it's, it's an alignment uh, between the heart and the mind and the emotions. And he says, this is important because it's easier to choose less stressful perceptions and recreate the flow of our daily routines. See, when we're in a panic or really afraid, we're out of the flow of what's happening around us. But when we can use all of our energy systems in our body, and particularly the high energy of the heart, the calm, peace, loving, intuitive energy of the heart, gives us a different operating system to work in. He says it's more information to make a decision to to deal with a problem, to deal with our own stressed out belief system, to deal with our story. So that's why it's important. That's what what they've done is uh, put together these tools and techniques that are used, like I said, worldwide uh, to help people live their lives, live their better lives, help children. I'm really pleased with what they've done with children. But that's where they are. That's their mission, to help people not live in fear, basically, but live in, live in love. And so they really made a commitment to awakening the heart of humanity, so to speak. Um, they believe that you know, when we can align and connect our heart and our mind and our, and our body and our feelings and thoughts, then we have a really uh, a higher, a more efficient more well, more wise uh, system with which we can work in our world and make make decisions and, and operate from, so that we maybe have a better feeling about ourselves, even feel more worthy, feel like we really are worthy and lovable, and that we can have a passion and compassion and a heartfelt, heartfelt, loving energy feeling about life, which is a big deal. It's just a big deal. They've done tons and tons of scientific research over tons and tons of years 
done research and they've done training and they've developed technologies that can research and, and tell us lots of things about the energy flowing through this through us. So it's it's a nonprofit organization. Um, and they're I like the words that they use. They provide tools to connect us to the heart of who we truly are. Remember we've talked about that, that we have a body we're living in on this earth and this play we're in, involved right now in this story. But our heart and our soul live forever. And so who we truly are and who our connection to our soul and to universal higher energy, God energy, whatever we're going to call it, is to our heart. So we're really connecting to the bigger part of us, not the, not the, not the Sue this time, but the Sue whose heart and soul are always alive and always well. And that that's a bigger Sue than the one that's just living in this body at this moment. But they use reliable scientific based tools that can measure the connection between uh, the mind and the heart and the body. And then they try to develop the tools that people can increase, decrease their stress, increase their resilience, and under, un, unlock that, you know, those natural guidance features that are, are there, that small, quiet voice that we need to listen to and sometimes forget to listen to. But anyway, that's our vision. Uh, that's that's our vision through a long time. The, the you know, voice of the heart and feelings have been referred to in gazillions and gazillions of, of writings for a long time. Uh, people talk about speaking from the heart, connecting with the heart, following the heart, but we really haven't quite known how to do that. And they bring help to people who really might want to do that. And, and their intent, again, is transformation, is change, is as we talk now a lot, is raising their vibrational consciousness. That means they're raising the energy level. You know, love is a higher vibration than fear or concern. So, you know, that's what they're about. So look at, look at them. Go to Heart Math. There's tons of things on there. We're going to talk about some of the tools they have when we come back. This is Sue McDaniel on the I Am Heart Show on Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation if you seek a courageous advocate prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations carol ann hamilton is the one for you Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration, plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. This is the I Am Heart Show. I'm your host, Sue McDaniel, on Bold Brave Media, Talk Radio, and TuneIn Radio. As we move to our connectedness and as we move to open to be with people again and to open our own heart to everyone, 
I want to share a little bit what they said about kindness. We've talked about kindness before, and I love their definition of kindness. They talk about kindness and the fact that everyone loves that warm heart feeling when they, when you do something for someone else. You know, if you've ever done something for someone and you didn't really intend that it was for you, but you did it for them, and all of a sudden you just felt really wonderful because you, you did for something for someone else. It's a contagious kind of action when we do something for someone else and they appreciate it and it makes a difference in their life. So they conducted a study, or the Heart Math conducted a study between University of British Columbia students and found that performing acts of kindness can help lower people's social anxiety. And people's social anxiety also almost, almost always is based in negative self-beliefs and behaviors. You know, I'm not good enough, no one cares what I have to say, on and on and on. But this, this is their quotes. We found that any kind act appeared to have the same benefit. Even small gestures like opening a door for someone or saying thanks to the bus driver. Kindness didn't need to involve money or time-consuming efforts. Although some of our participants did do such things, kindness didn't even need to be face-to-face. -face. We've been talking for weeks now about being kind to ourselves and being kind to others as, they, as we move out into the world again, because you never know what someone else has been through, nor you never know what someone else is facing. So, you know, they may be a little wacky or f afraid, but maybe a little kindness might make a difference in their life. And that's what they said. You know, it might, might it alleviate anxiety along with providing health benefits to them just to be kind. It goes deeper than just a popular thing to do in the moment. It has deeper impact upon people in terms of their quality of life, their health, and everything else. Um, so it's the same thing as, you know, as, as we measured the energy they have all kind of tools to measure things with. As they know, they've made, measured energy as people touch each other. And, you know, as we've had a winter in which didn't even get a hug from someone, um, they've also looked at the simple example of a touch energy exchange. It's when someone extends a hand or someone opens a door or someone helps someone up from a chair. You know, it's not like it's, like the 4th of July is around the corner, like it's fireworks that goes away or, or boom, 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 bang, bang, that kind of experience. But it's just like a touching out to someone. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just someone for that moment connecting to them and touching out to them in some, some small way. It may not be a big way at all, but it's still like it's a connection. We are so in need of connection. So their studies show that it helps both the giver and the receiver. In other words, it helps the person who's reached out, done something for someone, touched someone, and it helps the person who gets it, if only for a moment. If it's only for a moment. As you fan out, think of the, the, think of the impact you can have, not only for yourself and your family, but other people just to reach out and in some way connect with them with a little kindness, a smile, a word that's passed between someone. It's just huge. It's huge. Because actually what we do is sharing our energy with them. You know, we're all energy. We have our energy, our magnetic field. And when we reach out in a loving manner like that, we're sharing our loving, loving energy with them. And they feel that. And they've measured those kind of things also. But, you know, it's like if you're talking to someone or if you're in, in a room where someone is having a critical conversation and perhaps they're getting angry and they're too loud and they're critical and they're maybe abusive to each other, you sense that and that affects you. That's, that's the energy around when you can connect with someone and share a loving energy 
then that makes it an entirely different experience for them. Did I go off air? So, okay. Okay. So, again, we had a little glip there. But when you are nice to others, consider their feelings, perform some act of kindness, it, it's a whole phenomenon where it changes the tension in the room, changes the whole atmosphere in the room. So, you know, we can use our kindness to change our world in a world right now where people are disconnected and we're angry and there's stories of people attacking other folks for no reason, you know. So do your part, uh, do your part and, and be kind to other people. Don't, don't take your stuff out on them. Go do it some other way. Uh, but you're feeding the field of energy when you do that. See, when you're kind to someone else, you, you feel the field of energy with them. You, you give that positive, good, loving energy to someone, and that, that goes to them, but it also goes out in the world. As a, per, as a person, as a member of the collective body of people on this planet, when you send out anger, you increase the anger. We've talked about this. But when you send out loving, kind, helpful, caring words and actions and and you know, anything, activity, then you change the collective in that way. And that's the world we want to live in. That's the big deal. So kindness is what? Kindness can help everybody. It has positive effects. It help it picks up on our brain and it improves us in every way. So what are the benefits of kindness? Well, people live longer. I can understand that. People who have an animal or a pet or someone to love live longer. There's less stress. When you can reach out to someone in a loving manner, a kind manner, a caring manner, it takes away a bit of the stress. It also help improves our cardiovascular system. Our, our poor little pumpkin heart wants someone to love it. They want to receive love. They don't want to receive one more harsh criticism or one more not caring person. It increases energy. Remember, that's positive, loving energy, magnetic energy that we live in. So you're sending that out to the whole world and saying, hey, this is a wonderful place to be in. Not, no, it's awful. It's scary. You're changing the world for everybody. It improves your immune system. It improves everybody's immune system because it's an inner change in energy. And my goodness, remember, we can heal when we're loving and kind. When we're not kind, that's, that's, that's when often dis-ease or dis-ease, feeling that comfortable is there. So we can improve you and you can improve them. If ever, your, your family has ever been ill and you've loved them as much as you can, or your communities, love them as much as you can, they often improve, get better altogether. That it goes for you, by the way. When you have an illness, don't be criticized and beat up on yourself because this darn whatever, toe, nose, whatever hurts, I'm going to love you. You're doing the best you can here. I'm going to love me. Be comfort comforting and nurturing to me. That's a huge deal. Benefit of kindness is it, it, it uh, lowers the risk for depression. That's totally understandable. It's a whole connection that's different. Build stronger relationships. Wouldn't you rather have someone be kind and be glad to see you and smile and have a conversation than be judgmental and critical and, and not care? And we can care immediately. I've been with some medical people in the last week, some of which didn't give a damn. And it was apparent when they first walked into the room. And some who cared 195%, and that was wonderful. But it makes a huge difference. It also makes better performance at work or school. It's that connection. Lordy, lordy, we needed a connection. And that's what Lee said, and that's what other people have said since then. You know, let's, let's build the connection. See, it's like we all are the same, basically. We all have the same innards. We have the same organs, the same same nerves and the same bones and everything. We
loving care and protection and concern and nurturing and patience and kindness. And so, you know, they've worked with this and they know the benefits and they can prove scientifically the benefits of kindness. So, you know, open it up, open it up, open it up to you, <clears throat> open it up to others. It's just a huge field of study that they've had from heart math. So it's time to open it up and share it with other people. Interestingly enough, the book I Am Heart in the last chapter has a whole section on the I Am Energy Circle of Influence, talking about if you are kind to someone, loving to someone, helpful to someone. It's like it's I have a pond, and if you throw a pebble in that pond of water or that lake of water, it hits the water, the little, little circles of water go around what the rock or the pebble you threw in that water. And it's like, bam, your pebbles, a loving feeling, a touch, a smile, a kind word, and that ripples all around that lake. Your same kind word or your loving presence ripples through this whole collective of people. It's huge. It's huge, and it's really needed. So think about that. It's a gift you can give that doesn't cost any money. It can create miracles, actually. It's simple. But tomorrow morning, if you see someone, smile, just smile at them. They may not smile back, but maybe they'll change their day from that day forward. Or someone comes from home, home from work, give them a big hug. You don't, you don't know what happened that day. Or call someone. Just touch, reach out. It's time we reach out and it's changed that, that habit that we're, well, or that situation we've been in in which people have been disconnected from each other. So it's actually a way to create miracles. I Am Heart says it's a way to create miracles, a way to make a difference in the world, to reach out to people. And there are tons of ways to do that. You can give a hug or a kiss to someone you really love. You can even shake someone's hand. Of course, now we're probably afraid to shake someone's hand. But, you know, you can do someone a favor. You can simply say thank you. I appreciate what you try to do for me. I know you're doing the best you can to help me out. But there's tons of way. Tons of way you can listen. You can smile. I mean, there's tons of way you can help people and connect to them. So it's a really big deal, this kindness thing. So think about that. Just one little bitty thing a day. This is Sue McDaniel on the I Am Heart Show on Bold Brain Media Talk Radio and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, 
and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. This is the I Am Heart Show. My name is Sue McDaniel on BBM uh, Talk Radio and TuneIn Radio. We're talking about the Heart Math Institute today and all the things they have to offer you. Uh, they've done years of research and, conject- and scientific research, actually, on, on the power of the heart and how that influences us and how it influences the lives of everyone. We talked about kindness the huge role of kindness we've always needed, but right now is even more. And I, as I was looking at the website today, I was drawn to a piece they have on humility. And I really was surprised. I was drawn to it, but it makes sense um, because their whole effort is to find the, the calm spot, the heart, mind, and soul spot where people can connect. But they were talking about humility. And as we get out and work together, uh, and as we connect with people again, whether it's from home or from um, working in the office again, we're still dealing with people and all of the experiences and life 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 traumas and things that people have. And sometimes we can get along better with people if we can be a little humble. And let me tell you what humble means and what it doesn't mean. Um, They talk about heart humility as living and working from who we truly are and accepting ourselves, our strengths with gratitude and not judging ourselves for who we are, is giving ourselves credit for all that we do, and being in gratitude for ourselves, what we do, and the world around us. And that's really a different definition, because sometimes we're incredibly hard on ourselves. We can't give ourselves an inch, let alone a mile. And their, their theory is that hard humility can help us walk through the world with confidence integrity, and wisdom. Because we aren't judging ourselves, we're giving ourselves credit for our strengths, and we're looking at everything around us with appreciation. Doesn't mean we're timid. Doesn't mean that we're only quiet and don't say anything. Just means we're honest with ourselves and express our gratitude for who we are and what we do. And respect ourselves and other people. I thought that was a really good way to think of the world as we walk in the world. And and again, maybe have to go back to the office and work with people face-to-face where we haven't for a while. But they talk about how you express humility. And this is what they have to say. And number one is admitting you admitting admitting you don't have all the answers. And you know, some of us, I have done it. You probably have too. Um, sometimes tend to think you have all the answers from your perspective. And as we move back and connect, part of our connection is being open to other perspectives being open to other ways of thinking about things and doing things. And maybe it's different than we might have done it, but in the best interest of the organization or the family or the community, that might be the best after all. The second thing is seeking advice or ideas from others. Um, Do we ask people what they think? Do we ask people what we think? Do we ask for their ideas? In my experience, some of the most wonderful things have been 
coming from people sitting down and sharing their ideas. And maybe my idea was a piece of the big picture, but your idea made it a really wonderful big picture when added together and it looked totally different than what I thought when I went into it and better. So, you know, do that. Don't think that, you know, you have or hope no one else has, you know, the by gosh only way to do it because there's many ways to do things now. And as we develop and, and are creative and open up now, there could be wonderful things happen from us working together. Number three is engaging and accepting different points of view. You know, we've been so divisive and not in our disagreements. And it's okay. You, you develop your, your points of view. Yes, exactly. You're right. But other people have different points of view. And giving them a little wee way to have them and agreeing not to agree. I love you, but I'm going to disagree with you on this, not making it an issue. Number four is being willing to admit one's own imperfections. We all have our strong suits. We all have our things we are not so strong with, that we don't know so well, that we aren't interested in. So build on our strong suits. But I would also say don't be afraid to look at one of those things that perhaps in the past you've not wanted to because it might be at this point in time something really beneficial to be open to something new. Number five, laying aside ego and getting in the trenches. This is the get in the trenches time to work together. What kind of world do we want to build? And sometimes it takes being in the trenches to find our way out, to find what works best. What we thought worked for the organization or the family, we can tweak it a bit and make a commitment to tweaking it a bit until it works the best for everybody. Number six is being open to feedback from family, friends, and colleagues. Are we willing to listen to what someone else has to say? Really, really willing, willing to listen and not judge what they have to say or put it down or be critical. Um, are we willing to be open? Something we really quite actively may disagree with. And number seven is listening without judging or interrupting. This thing's a really huge thing. People want to be listened to. And oftentimes we listen to people, but we listen only with maybe a half an ear because we're, my, our mind is so busy thinking about, I'm going to say this when they get done, or I'm going to counter with this. Or instead of really listening for what they're saying, we're all the time thinking of ways why we don't agree with this or we don't like this, if we, even if we don't say that. We're putting it down. And when we listen to people, it changes everything. It says you're important. I appreciate what you've got to say. You're valuable. What you have to say is valuable. So listen. It's just, it's huge. So what's up? What's there's an old saying? It, oh, I know. It says, I've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. It means I need to listen twice as much as I talk. So think about that. I mean, it's really, really, really a big deal. And then number eight is making sure others feel valuable or valued, important, and appreciated. You know, I think that's sometimes we kind of forget to do about do that. There's many ways you can make someone feel value and appreciated. You know, listening is one, saying thank you, doing small things for them. Uh, giving, giving them credit for what they do in their work or at home. Your kids, you know, help them to feel valued at home if they do a small task or they do something you ask them to do. There's tons and tons and tons of ways depending on your situation. But, you know, that's part of our connecting. That's part of our connecting. It's 
it's kind of earning the respect of family and friends and coworkers and allowing creativity, creating peace, because that's where we need to go right now. That's a really big deal. I was surprised this was in their list of things. I don't know how long it's been there, but I thought it was really good. You know, sometimes we get caught up in the stress of things and it drains us energy and it moves us backwards. But if we can do these things, uh, it's kind of like self-care for us, person care for our interactions, and going with the flow, making things work, instead of knowing that we know how to do it. It's showing love and kindness and compassion, a way to foster peace and happiness in our families, our work, and our social life as opposed to some of the conflicts I've been through, and I'm sure you've been through them too. So I really liked it. I think it was something we need to think about as we go back to work in the office or we do whatever with our family lives. We move. Uh, our, our life changes one more time. It's like the new way to be. Uh, and I would, I would not have defined humility that way, but I think that they did a very good thing with that. Another thing they talked about that's important for you to think about right now and for me too is to take, take a pause during your day. Sometimes the day gets the best of us. It didn't turn out like we intended and rough spots happen and people are combative or people are having a, having a bad day. And from time to time, we need to find a spot just to get away and be still. Take a walk outside for a moment. Just to stop and look at our internal reaction, what our thoughts and feelings are about what's going on, and think, well, how do I want to handle this, and is this going to serve me and everybody around me the best way? So, you know, find a spot where you can move to a calm space um, where you can... Just stop, breathe, of course, always breathe, and be calm, and think about the response you want to make. Because sometimes we make a response that we really wish we hadn't made. So it's, it's like it's, it's a preventive measure. It's making a different choice. Um, how many of us have done this before? We've got in the middle of a situation and we snapped off an email or we've whooped out a reply or we've walked out of a room and after a moment went, oops, I knew I shouldn't have done that that way. It's part of being human. It's all okay. But it's all of heart math. It's calm. How to do it in calm, heart-centered way so that you don't respond in a way that you wish you hadn't, and then you feel bad about, about it. I'm your host, Sue McDaniel, on the I Am Heart Show, on Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and Tune In Radio. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. 
She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop. Empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it. Listening to the I Am a Heart Show with host Sue McDaniel on Go Brave Media, Talk Radio, and Tune In Radio. We're talking about heart math. If you don't just don't haven't heard of them, get on the web and just put in heart math and look at all the things they have available for us to use. Um, all the things that keep us calm and help us touch our heart and not let our stress and anxiety get to us are to connect with other people. I've been talking about connecting with other people as we move forward and get out in the world again and connect with them in a different way. We talked about calm, taking a break and calm when you need it. And sometimes really the the biggest deal with that is more quickly enough realizing that you're going to go down the bunny trail and you don't want to do that. Catching your feelings enough that you can prevent yourself from Uh, saying something you shouldn't say or doing something you shouldn't do. And, of course, the biggest thing in doing that is catching yourself. And, you know, breathing, of course, is the way that helps you to do that. Take some deep breaths. I told you last week about the one where you breathe in quickly twice and then let out a brief breath. That's really helpful. But it helps you to calm your, your anxiety, your anger, whatever vibrations you're carrying so you don't make a... I guess to call it a toxic reaction to something. So you're creating a space so you can make a better choice is what you're doing. And you can being a space to de-stress yourself. So, you know, you could pause and ask what your heart would say. You know, what would you do in this situation, heart? You can talk to your heart and say, okay, let's, let's consider it. You know, feel what your heart would do. If you have time, you may not have time. You may be have people all around you, but do the best you can. Uh, and, you know, if you, if you want to practice this, because all this stuff takes practice, uh, but make it an issue for, an is- not an issue for a week, but make it a, a promise for a week that you'll begin to practice this when you when you need to and kind of Remind yourself to pause at certain times. Maybe you need to pause at 10 o'clock every day and go take a short walk away from your desk if you can do that or take a walk outside and just kind of regroup and use your gut or use your heart feeling to know when you need to do that. So actually this gives you a sense of your own, mm, I guess, confidence or security that if you can do this and, and, you know, step back, step, step in. Remember the hurricane? Instead of being in the hurricane, stepping back in the eye of hurricane, just a minute, the word's quiet in the eye of the hurricane. There's no stuff going around. But step there just for a minute that on an eye where it's calm and peaceful and just think, now, what's going on here? And what do I want to do? I don't want to sit back. I don't want to, I don't want to fix something worse than this. And, what can I do here to make this situation productive for everyone? I used to have a young man in my classes, and he would say, you know, he taught himself to listen first, always listen first, always breathe first, and then talk last. And you can listen to people, and it helps you to learn to listen to people. It, it's, I know we've all had hard lessons when we, you know, open your mouth and out it flies. I've done the same thing more than I probably do know. So if you do this, just take 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 time. Take a pause and just open the door to calm and just see what happens. Because what you need to do is try to to put a to put a jam on that signal that you have internally that says, oops, this is going um, 
someone I don't agree with, I don't like, and so I'm, it's going to stress me out. I Am Heart has a bunch of inner things that they share with you, not I Am Heart, uh, Heart Math. But they all talk about that ease. They all talk about the coherence. They all talk about inner peace, inner ease. And it's all about finding that quiet spot, that inner space of ease and quiet and expansion and peace where you can have time to make a choice on how you're going to respond or how you're going to act or give you a time to see how you really feel. I think that's almost more important to give you time to go. So where am I here? It's quieting all the inner noise. It's buzzing in your head. Particularly if you're reacting to something to say, okay, I need to be still here a minute and look at another choice. Look at another way we could respond. Look at another option. Um, to, to give us street worthy response, so to speak, or give me a more practical response. You know, so it's that actually it's, it's tapping in the wisdom and the intuition of your heart. When you can kind of find a palm, you know, that calm spot where you can reconsider the situation and how you want to handle it. It's, it, it's just a way to deal with the world. And then they, they call it, they call it lots of things. They call it inner ease. They call it inner stillness, depending on what you're going to do. Um, inner ease is, again, the, the, the brings of balance, uh, an, an alignment, cooperation with your heart and mind, emotions. It lets you touch base with your heart and your intuition. And all of them, no matter which one you use, they talk about and they teach you how to get there, how to, what the technique is. And of course, there's always breathing. But their breathing isn't breathing only to calm down. Breathing is to take a breath and connect with your heart when you breathe. It's heart math. It's heart math. And as you take a breath and you connect with your heart, put your hand on your heart and connect with that. As you take each breath and, and begin to fall, then to begin to pull in some quiet and some calm. And, you know, it, it may take a while. Really be honest with this. It may take for you a while to do this, and that's okay. But if you can breathe in and calm the stress, and I've been there, and I, I know that sometimes breath seems like it's impossible, but if you can just keep doing it, and calm the stress, you know, calm the stress, calm the stress. He would take a walk and breathe real deeply and calm the stress. That's That will help you to get to that spot where you can look at it differently, where you can have another way of thinking of doing this. The Dalai Lama says we can never obtain peace in the outer world until we make peace with ourselves. So see the response in your outer world is coming from what, what's going on in you, from your emotions, from your flow, from my emotions, from my flow. So we can become more aware of that. Take time to become more aware of what triggered you, um, what got jammed up, what didn't work. Then that, that's helpful in backing off, again, in stepping into the eye of the hurricane, not being taken by the winds of the air. And it, it helps you to navigate through things, maybe even be less resistant to things that you don't like. And you're really accessing this heart energy. It's heart energy, the energy of your heart, the peace of your heart. It's, it's creating peace for you. And we've talked for a long time. That's an inside job. It's a huge thing we can do for ourselves. But... You know, we, we, what we do, what we think and feel on the inside is reflected on the outside. So it's from the inside out, like we've always talked. So if you can get to a spot on the inside that can give you a little bit of time to reconsider, a little bit of time to think, a little more ease, then you might change how you're going to react to something to do that. Also, one of the ways they're talking about is inner stillness. 
And that's something maybe you want to use when you want to make a higher connection to your heart. You want to connect to to the love, to the peace, to the to the center of your heart. That might help you do that. I want to take a quick here quote from Gary Zukoff. He says, what is the wisdom of the heart? The part of you that is the healthiest, the most grounded, the most constructive, the most wholesome contributor to life with a capital L. Because the heart is the essence of who you really are. It knows where you need to go and why you're on this earth. Sometimes only the heart can let you know what you should do. Your brain has only a limited view of your circumstances. But your heart can access every situation from a higher perspective. And that's what I'm asking you to do. That's what I'm asking you to do. When you have to solve a problem, go away, get out of the situation, walk so you can clear your head, discover a different solution. That's actually the power of the heart, opening to the energy and wisdom and inspiration of the heart around you. So you need to listen, open to your heart. It's, it's huge. It's huge right now. The wisdom of the heart will be the power and the beauty and the opportunity of every moment that you live and cherish from now on. So open your heart, guys. Open your heart to yourself, to other people. This is Sue McDaniel on the I Am Heart Show on Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and Tune In Radio. Lots of heart love to you. This has been I Am Heart Radio with your host, Sue McDaniel. Join us each week at this time where connecting our hearts to a loving energy is offered by the universe on I Am Heart Radio. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.